H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus. One-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. We'll be having uh, but uh, different parameters, like you know, uh, basically existence in many forms. Poly means many. So in short, uh, if you want, what does it mean? Is like poly means many forms, many, and morphism means forms. So polymorphism means existence in many forms. So that's the reason people say that, uh, like you know, many forms means like sometimes the method name is same, but it will be it will be available in different different forms simple example area I say area area can be for a circle area for a rectangle area for a cylinder the method name is same but it will it is existing different different forms the meaning is different okay so that's what they say depends upon that uh, no, uh, requirement uh, you have to write the same method name but it will be called as per the as per the arguments okay uh, so once we see the example you get to know what does it mean that's the reason I'm saying here if two or more methods in a class method I'm saying what is the main use of methods methods perform some functionality methods perform some functionality what I'm saying if two or more methods in a class which are having the same name means all the methods are having the same name there is no change I'll try to write down in the example you get an understanding but they differ in the following following means what argument type Suppose for example, I'll try to create one method, public void area int a, one method. Second method, public void area float b. What is happening here? The method name is same, but I'm changing the argument type. Suppose for example, number of arguments, number of arguments is what? Public void area int a comma float b. And position of the arguments public void area float a comma int b see I'm explaining all these examples I write down all the examples these methods are called overloaded methods let's write down all the examples see public void void int sorry oh, area area write down int yeah. so this is one method okay let's see See, another method, public void area float A. See, these two are different argument types. See, one time I am writing for integer, another time I am writing for float. These are for different argument types. Okay, different the argument types. Okay, this is for A. This example for A. Okay, I'll write down for the A. okay number of arguments sometimes you write what sometimes you write one one argument sometimes you write two arguments means what see here so these two methods are differ in the number of arguments one for one method we are passing only one argument for the same method name we are passing different arguments so these two are overloaded methods okay see I'm not talking while writing I'm not talking because the voice might break that's the reason after writing I'm talking okay so public void area int a okay so, public void area float a comma b so in the first method we are passing one argument the second method we are passing two arguments okay they differ in the number of arguments now the position of arguments see
okay this is how you write the position of arguments okay public void area float a comma ntb public void area nta comma float that's how you have to write it so we are talking about methods if two are what i mean to say the method name is same but the implementation is different okay the method implementation is different that's what i'm saying the method name is same but it exists in many forms sometimes for circle area is pi r square sometimes for cylinder pi r square h sometimes the area is 2 into length plus breadth a square for square so depends on the requirement the method name is same the arguments might differ the arguments number of arguments might differ the position of arguments might differ then these methods are called as overloaded methods overloading happens during compile time means everybody knows i told you from the beginning there are two things compile time run time compile time means what i can click on the method and i can show you which method is going to be called that is static means it cannot be changed what are the method it's going to be called that same method is going to be called during run time also oh, so compile time means what again i'm explaining when you click on the method it will be showing which method is going to be called the same method is going to be called during run time because when you try to run here we get the output okay this thing if you want to understand let's see with an example first we'll see overloading method overloading we'll see with an example i'm showing okay so we'll get we'll get lot of doubts let's all clear everything let's create one more package for 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 polymorphism let's create one more package for polymorphism class package for create polymorphism i'm showing eclipse i hope everybody is able to see eclipse polymorphism i'm creating a package for polymorphism yes i created a package for polymorphism cool so i'm creating a class i'm creating a class for method overloading for understanding this is not a predefined class i am creating by my my own don't think that this class is already available i am creating some name for my understanding so i can recollect afterwards okay so in this class if you want to execute as i told you from the beginning if you want to execute the class we will write a main method main m e i n control space i'll set the first one i written main method so apart from this what we will try to write we will write all these method names so what i am trying to do i am trying to copy these two method names see because i don't want to write again i'll copy this i go to the eclipse i'll write down these two methods see see these two methods are called as overloaded methods now area int of a area float of a so how do we call these methods if you want to call the non static methods within this class how do we call we create a object let's create an object now how do we call non static methods we create an object the logic is same the logic is same you have to by this time you should be familiar with creating object say o or say m so understand m is equal to so m is an object suppose for example i want to call this method which is of area int of a how do we call suppose for example i am planning to call area int of a how do we call see m dot area we have to pass some integer any integer we can pass suppose for example that's what somebody is saying is a 10 so i'll pass 10 so how do you know this method is going to be called this method is going to how do you know see i told you from the beginning you just control click on this control click on this the cursor goes there again i'm showing placing a mouse pointer there control hold the control button okay and place a mouse pointer here just click on this this the cursor goes there means okay this is going to be called a method area which contains an integer so this happens during compile time so whatever it happens during compile time the same thing happens during run time that's the reason they say it's called static binding binding means which method i'm going to call it is fixed it is not going to be changed during the entire execution of the program that's the reason they say it's a static binding people know static means what constant non static means what basically not in the case of our uh, java basically static dynamic will be there static means what it's called it's fixed dynamic is what it will keep on changing so method overriding is dynamic that we'll see afterwards for a serious class we'll see m dot so how do we call float as i told you from the beginning 2.5 f we have to mention f that's it so i'll write to i'll write to click on this area 
let's click on this area control press the mouse pointer on this click on this this is going to be called this one so i'll write down here something Okay. So when I try to run what happens, the value of A is 10, the value of A is 2.5. So you can perform some calculation, but I am not doing that. I am just written a method. If you want, you can say pi r square pi is 3.14. And if you want to calculate the circle area, you can say 3.4 into 10 into 10. If you want, you can do that also. But I am not doing anything. I am just trying to print something because that is required for us. Just That's it. So I will try to run. What happens? When you try to run m dot area, this will be called the value of A is 10. Okay value of a is 10 okay the value of a is float so let's see how it happens let's run this the value of a is 10 the value of a is 2.5 so this is called compile time polymorphism the method that is going to be invoked it is going to be fixed in the compile time that's the reason method overloading is called compile time polymorphism again i'm showing two or more methods which are having the same name area area but they differ in the argument types what are the argument types int float okay like that you can write all these four this also you can write this also you can write your wish you just you want to practice remaining two also you can practice that's what i have given the structure also okay so then they say these methods are overloaded methods area is a overloaded method here for understanding okay that is for method overloading I think we have sufficient time. We'll try to cover overriding also so that we can start selling them from tomorrow. That's my plan. Let's see. Let's see for overriding. Let me write the theoretical part. I'm not talking now. I'm just writing the theory. Let me write down theory. Then I'll talk. Okay. See. I don't bother about return type, I bother about arguments. Return type, there is no change. If you change the return type also, I don't bother. That's the reason I'm saying, I always bother about argument type. Return type is not an issue. So that's the reason, if I try to talk about return type, people get confused. Don't discuss, don't talk about return type. Return type is not required. I mainly focus on the argument types. Okay? Even if you have the same return type or different return type, compiler will not check. Compiler always checks the, what is the name of the method what is the argument you are passing that's what it will check it will not check the return type okay so let's see more writing means what see let's see i think everybody knows when will this when we talk about superclass and subclass something has to come in your mind when it will come superclass and subclass concept can anybody type in the chart window when it comes superclass and subclass any inheritance when I talk about superclass and subclass, this will come only in the inheritance. So you have to remember, okay, there is a superclass, there is a subclass. Subclass, we are extending superclass. What I mean to say, if the superclass and subclass are having the same method, same method name, I should mention same method name, same method name with same number of arguments. There is no change in the method. I am trying to write the same method in the superclass and subclass then that method is called as overriding method then the method is called as overriding method 
what I am saying? If the method is same in super class and sub class, then the method is called as overriding method. Okay. So what is the main use of overriding methods in the real time? Suppose for example, somebody has given a class to me. Somebody has given a class to me. I feel that the class contains some method which I can use it. But what happens? That method is method is okay, but the method contains some functionality which I don't want to use it. I want to write my own functionality. So what you do, subclass extends superclass, you use the same method name, but you try to write your own implementation. What does it mean? In the real time, people use that. Okay? So basically, if superclass and subclass are having the same, same methods, they are having the same method name and same number of arguments, then the method is called method overriding. Okay? Overriding happens during runtime. What I'm interested in the real term when we'll use, we've tried, suppose for example, a data method called display in the super class. I'm a subclass. I'm a subclass. I try to use a method. But what I see, display method is perfect, but that contains some logic which I don't want to use it. I'll write my own. But I'll put the same method name in the subclass also. Then I say, display is there in the super class. Display is in the subclass also. These two methods are called overridden methods. And overriding happens during runtime. That's what we'll see now in the example. For our understanding, let's start creating an example, then we'll discuss more. Okay, let's create an example first. We'll create a class called superclass first. See, I'm writing public class superclass. Let me write one method, see. I am in super class. This is super class. I am writing for understanding. I am creating one more class for subclass. See? This we have seen inheritance. If you are not able to understand, please go through the inheritance video again. Or inheritance examples. Please. There also we created two classes. Super class and subclass. Subclass extends super class. So I say, ex I say extends here. Subclass extends super class. So usually I have to use the same method name in the subclass also. Then only I can say both are so overridden methods. See, I'll try to put the same method name here also. I'll copy this. I'm writing the same method in the subclass also. See here. What I have done? The same method which is available in the superclass is copied into the subclass also. Well, I have done the same thing, fine. Now, now let's create a main method, M-A-I-N. Please change, yes, I'll just change the print, yeah, that's right. Perfect, actually I'll tend to change for the print statement, so people should not get confused in subclass. Fine. Yes, thanks for that. So, control space. So what I did basically, somebody is saying to change the print statement, right? So what does it mean? Okay, one second, I'm getting a call, one second.
okay uh, sorry for that i got a call fine uh, got over okay so basically i am writing the same method in the display in the super class and sub class now i am trying to call the method see now i am trying to create an instance of the sub class so we did the same thing last time also let's see let's create an instance of the sub class subclass s is equal to new subclass so using this object i can call the method available in the subclass s dot display see okay as everybody knows when i try to run this which method will be called so i'll click on the c so when i say sub display because it will check within the subclass first whether this method is available or not if this no method is not available in the subclass then it will go to the super class always i am saying this i have said in the beginning also when i try to invoke a method it will try to check in the subclass first yes this method is not available then it will go to super class but here it will check yes it is available in subclass why should i go to super class no i will try to invoke that's called overriding concept overriding means what don't use that use this okay so when i try to run what happens see in subclass this everybody knows it as part of inheritance topic we have explained it if the method is available in subclass the subclass is highest priority that everybody knows it then what is different in the case of overriding which we called as dynamic polymorphism now everybody focus on this this is the point which we are seeing here which is different see okay now i want the answers from everyone okay when i say s1 dot display which method is going to be called i want answers from everyone please type in the chat window so to know i can understand know what is your ob observation okay so it is going to call super class okay somebody is saying it will call a super class method in sub super class so which one it will be called super class or sub class so guess it it's okay not an issue it's it might be a problem guess it okay so what is the output of this in subclass or in superclass because displays method is available in both the places what i am trying to do superclass s1 is equal to new subclass i am trying to create instance of superclass and i am trying to assign a subclass instance as i told you superclass can hold any of its subclass instances because superclass is a superset okay fine i think i got some couple of answers i'll explain you i understand subclass it will try to print a subclass only what why it prints let's see okay again i'm saying from c from compile time suppose for example when i try to print s1 dot display now see here okay when i clicking on the display method it is going to super class somebody said super classes yes that is correct what they said is correct that happens during compile time it com during compile time it is going to call in super class that is perfect but when i try to run when i try to run what happens it will try to call this one again i'm saying what time i want to click here it shows that the method that is called super class it's called compile time see but when i try to run it will call this method and it will print in sub class why what happens okay what happens during run time during run time run time instance creation happens object creation happens during run time so during run time it will check what kind of object it is yes it is a subclass object so let me go and invoke the subclass method that's why it happens okay so it is called dynamic polymorphism why in the compile time it is going to call superclass display method in the run time it is going to call subclass display method that's the reason it is called as dynamic polymorphism okay it is going to be called as dynamic polymorphism okay so method overriding means what two or two methods which are having the same name the superclass and subclass and they are existing in the superclass and subclass okay with the same arguments 
but different implementation when you try to create an instance and assign it to the super class during compile time it will invoke the super class method but during run time it will invoke the subclass method so this is called dynamic polymorphism means compile time it is going to pick something run time it is going to pick another one because object creation happens here what's the object here the object is what new subclass so this is the highest preference let me go and call the display method available in the subclass the output of this is in subclass that is the answer see there is no use in the real time means like you know sometimes you you can decide which method to call right uh, this is uh, just for understanding they have given two methods how to which one to call in real time you don't get much difference basically i think you will not get much difference basically you know which method to call suppose you want super class method you create a super class instance if you want to call super sub class method if you want to invoke sub class method you can create sub class instance in real time you not get much much example but they said like you know overriding means what it happens during run time so when you try to create an instance and assign it to super class it will try to call the display method during run time uh, in the uh, sorry in the run time it will call the sub class method but in the compile time it will call the super class method but the real time you will not get much difference you you will not use it at, at all that's why i'm saying this is only for java concept it is not at all useful for selenium also okay fine we'll do one thing which we're already running out of time we'll start um, taking the q and a session let me stop uh, recording a